Yes. What is inside this book? What is the secret? And joining us now is author Chuck Fisher. He is here. Chuck, tell us what's special about this book. It's called The White House. A pop-up book. That's what's special. Uh, it's uh, the history of Washington, D.C., and uh, the uh, history of the White House is, you know, a museum of American art and architecture and uh, design. And as you turn the pages uh, in the book, you know, there's a lot of information. I'm, I'm an artist, and uh, so I created these three-dimensional pop-ups uh, so that you can actually feel like you're taking a tour of the White House. That's exactly right. In fact, I have one of these books in front of me right now. Great. And I have just popped up, uh, if we can come back to me here, yes. popped up. This is the White House. This, that you were looking at a view of the South Lawn in the South Portico. I'm going to turn it around now. Right. That's the view from Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, the North Portico is the view from Pennsylvania Avenue, that's right. And uh, that uh, is a, a scale model of the White House that I, uh, I took from these historical uh, drawings by the uh, building survey and uh, created the uh, three-dimensional pop-up. Um, who is your audience here? Is this a book for kids mostly, or is this a book for, oh, here's a First Ladies on a very nice fan. Yeah, the fan of the First Ladies. I mean, I, when people open that book, it's like, oh, wow. Um, the audience, I mean, there is a lot of, there's a lot of real, you know, good basic information. It is definitely not a children's pop-up book, but it's not too delicate for, you know, children to enjoy and pull flaps and open pages and read a little bit about, you know, the history of the most famous house in the world. But the target audience, um, it's just people interested in American history, interested in design, architecture, the presidency, the first ladies, and everything involved with that. Chuck, I want to thank you very much for running out of time here. It is a remarkable book, and the, and the workmanship, workmanship here is, is fantastic. I mean, this White House is uh, it's amazing. Thank you very much. So thanks very much for joining us. And I believe that brings us to our conclusion. I shut the book on the pop-up White House. And I think we have to shut the book on Politics Live for today. When the world's leading design firms need a mural evoking 18th century chinoiserie or grisaille dining room panels, they often turn to artist Chuck Fisher. Fisher's decorative paintings can be found on stylish surfaces from Bermuda to Beverly Hills, and his work has been featured on the pages of Architectural Digest, House Beautiful, House and Garden, Elle Decor, and the New York Times. Working out of his Manhattan studio, Fisher has become a sought-after artist in the world of interior design. I've been painting all my life. I've always had this ability, talent to draw. I didn't know my first trip to Europe would be so important, but it, um, I was, it was my first opportunity to go to Europe. I landed in Paris, went on this great tour across the, the countryside of France, and I saw the first time these rooms that are beautifully decorative painted, and they were painted in the 18th century, the 17th century, 19th century. And it was just feeling that history and that history that goes into my paintings, there it was. And all of a sudden, I thought, I can create this, and this is what I want to do. Chuck is not only a painter, but is often a collaborator in the project because he has an incredible knowledge and background of decorative painting. He's studied it, he's traveled, he's seen it. He also comes to the project with ideas. The most important thing is you need a decorative painter who can paint in a number of different styles. Bunny found this great panel at auction at Sotheby's, and it was, it was authentic, you know, early or mid-18th century. Uh, but there was only one. She and the client fell in love with this panel, and then they had the idea to come to me, and I would create three other large panels to complete this series. And it was quite complicated, because not only did, we, did I want to invent another scene, I wanted it painted as though it looked like I had had all the four panels together, but we had to make the paper look old, because it was old paper, it had tears and it wasn't perfect and the paint had been restored over a period of time so there was a thickness to the paint that you only get in antique panels and um, Chuck was able to recreate that on all the other panels and I think you'd have a very hard time when you go in the room 
figuring out which the old one was and the ones that Chuck had done. I'm given a style to paint in and I'll do some research, I'm able to figure it out and off I go. So I mean I could be painting for a client an Italian landscape, I could do a Swedish 18th century style painting, I could do a chinoiserie in the French style, I could combine an early 19th century, late 18th century, I could do an American primitive painting and then someone might come to me and say well could you do Art Nouveau? Well, yes, Art Nouveau in Vienna, so I could do a little research and there I go. Fisher begins each project with a small-scale watercolor rendering. Upon approval, the canvas is hung on site or in the studio for the first phase of the painting process. Fisher and his assistants can spend anywhere from a few weeks to several months to achieve his vision. A tour of Chuck Fisher's painted rooms includes some of the finest residences in the world, such as Lexington, Kentucky's famed Calumet Farm. Parrish Hadley came to me and asked me to create a dining room in this, again, in this American primitive style. But that was my first time. So it was, it was so challenging, so exciting. I knew that it was an important house, an important room, and I was given the opportunity to create something very special. Early in his career, Fisher painted this 18th century chinoiserie panel for the Kipps Bay Show House. His artistry was so well received that it quickly established his reputation as an inspired decorative painter. This grisaille powder room was painted in a Scandinavian chinoiserie style and makes a beautiful impression. For this dining room, Fisher designed and hand painted 84 Rococo panels. These parchment panels were hung on these beautiful apple green glazed walls and it's one of the most dramatic successful rooms I've been in. Here Fisher's trompe l'oeil painting creates the illusion of draped fabric in the neoclassic style. And in Dusseldorf, Germany, Mr. Fisher created one of his largest scale trompe l'oeil projects, transforming the interior walls of a chateau to appear as limestone block. Cut out of wood and whimsically painted, these valances are another Fisher trademark. These floors are intricately painted to give the illusion of marble or inlaid wood. Painted ceilings, often neglected in American interior design, have become another Fisher specialty. This fantasy boudoir was inspired by an exotic 18th century wallpaper design. I created this exotic romantic environment and I painted the zebra rug and I painted the trompe l'oeil valances I created a little terrace with the stars projected to the outside. This room inspired the design firm of Brunchwig and Fee to commission an exclusive collection of wallpaper and fabric designs to bear the Chuck Fisher name. I feel very proud of my work. I feel very I just feel very grateful that I've been given this talent and that I'm learning to develop it. I feel right now there just isn't anything else I'd be doing. For me, it combines my love of architecture and interior and design and sort of style in the late 20th century and how to create that in a painted environment. I mean, that's a challenge. What better thing is there to do? I mean, I live in New York City, I have a successful business, and I get to paint all day. For New York artist Chuck Fisher, designing patterns starts with an idea and then becomes reality with gentle brush strokes on a canvas. And his walls are like a small art gallery of color and fanciful images, as I saw when we visited him in his studio, where he's one of the talented people who creates looks that might end up in your home. Now, tell me about pattern in a room, because we're seeing wonderful patterns wherever I look here, and I think that's something that people sort of wonder, ooh, how far do you go? You can have pattern on your floors, you know, on the furniture, on the walls, the curtains, pattern on the ceilings. I'm a, I'm a very big believer in pattern. I think you can overwhelm a room sometimes with pattern, but it's, you know, it's about editing and it's about balance. Yes, scale. it is. Well, w tell me what are some of your inspirations? Because I'm looking at murals, I'm, I'm looking at photographs. Oh, so many great things here. I love you it. Know, it comes 
you know, from my travels, it comes from being exposed to some, you know, incredible designers that I've worked with through the years and homes that I've been in. The clients uh, can inspire me. And nature. I mean, that's really Absolutely. nature. So many of my designs, you know, starting in my mural work, they're often scenic designs, you know, oh. beautiful botanicals, leaves, yeah, and trees. Yeah, I noticed so your So now I can, leaves. you know, I transfer a lot of that into, uh, you know, designs. Chuck, so let's get specific. For instance, let's start with murals. Well, when I'm creating a mural for a client, I would uh, often paint in my studio, that's what I prefer to do, on canvas. Oh. This is a piece of canvas that, you know, is part of a mural, and it has a texture to it. I love it. And that's where, I, that's where I start. And then eventually, when I'm, when I'm complete with the design process and painting, then I would hang that in the home. I see, okay. Now, another uh, area that I'm doing is uh, fabric design, and I'll often start with inspiration. The inspiration for this design came from a book, and then I do a little watercolor rendering I for love the this. way that's a wall in a room. And I created a fantasy room for a show house. It's so delicate, you even have little birds there. Yes, they're little exotic birds. So let's see the fabric. And the fabric is, is a beautiful pattern. It's very large scale, tropical leaves. Oh, I love it. Thank it's you. It's wonderful. You see it has a little shimmer of gold yeah. in the pattern in the background. It's a real sort of layering. Yes, too. it is. Yeah, It's I a think. collage. That's another just uh, design that I enjoy, you know, working with. It, it adds depth, and it's very subtle background for this. Yeah, it almost softens a bold print. Yes, it does. I see you've got it in another colorway, too. Correct. Love mm -hmm. that, the green. Thanks, that right. punch of green. Right. Very cool. Mm-hmm. And then uh, um, another design, this is some inspiration for a room that I painted in Maine. I hand painted a mural and I did these random twigs oh. and the pattern itself So this is, is a little watercolor. That's a little watercolor, yes. And this is to scale. You see the window that was in the room and the wainscoting. I like what you did though. Then you made it into Thanks. wallpaper. I did. I made that into wallpaper. I think it can be a very contemporary background because yes. of, of, you know, the pattern that it creates. But also it's traditional because it is real twigs that I've painted. And it have a gothic uh, twig border that goes with it. it oh, coordinates. It's great. It comes in wonderful. different colorways as well. And a thrill for me is this was just... Uh, it's part of the uh, permanent collection of the Cooper Hewitt Museum, the National Museum of Design. How great. Yeah, it's very exciting. Chuck, I think one of people's concerns when dealing with pattern is how much is too much or how do you use it in a room effectively without feeling overwhelmed? If you combine patterns that, you know, coordinate and that, that have a continuity, that's great for a room. For instance, this is a very, you know, boldly patterned fabric I that I've designed. This. It's this collage of, you know, garden flowers. And there's this very small star stencil pattern in the background. So that's what you mean by the collage. It's sort of a layer. It's layers. It's, yeah. it's like pages from a botanical book just sort of scattered on the table. Mm. And then I created this coordinating pattern. Now, that's a different scale, but, you know, it's got this subtle background, and that really would calm the room. You know, this will look great on a sofa, uh -huh. but perhaps you'd put this with your chair, you know, chairs oh, yeah. that go. Or maybe you do your sofa in this, and you might do pillows on a chair. Okay. I saw this. Oh, yeah, yes, okay. right. Yeah. Um, you could do this. Maybe you could do a, a solid red pillow, too, or a, Be great. a, a violet. Because there's a lot of colors in here you could pick up for accents. But you don't have to be afraid. No. No. That's great. Yeah, and I think you could even, on your walls, you know, you could have a little more pattern as long as you keep it subtle. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good lesson. Right. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you.